I'm Evil Coyote and today I'm going to have a look at fuel efficiency and getting into orbit and trying to find out is there a better way to get into orbit than using things like asparagus staging and all that sort of thing. Um, so I came up with the idea a little earlier on and uh, I tried it out and it seems to work and that's to utilise jet engines. Um, as part of the overall design. Obviously most people will uh, you know, think about using jet engines for space planes and uh, just taking off and flying around the planet on um, you know, conventional uh, aircraft design. Uh, as yet I've not seen very many people incorporate it into their actual uh, main rocket designs. So first of all what I'm going to do is I'm going to have a control ship. So this is my control ship. Uh, we have two main stages. Uh, we have the upper stage, um, which consists of two science labs and some science modules. This is to give us some dead weight, basically. Um, and then we've got some fuel for that second stage and an engine, obviously. The uh, first stage you'll notice is you'll be thinking, what on earth's going on there? You know, that, that's never going to get into orbit. Well, there is a reason why I have designed it specifically like this. The uh, the lower uh, stage one, um, I have removed some of the fuel from this as well. I've essentially given this uh, first stage 300 units of liquid fuel um, plus oxidizer that can. Uh, that will obviously be used as well. Um, the engines, there's 13 LVT-30 engines, each one producing 215 thrust, and there's six of the Rockamax engines, each producing uh, 20 thrust each. So the total thrust is 2,915 for the first stage. Um, obviously, <laughs> you know, 300 units of fuel is not probably not going to get this very far, um, but let's see what happens. Um, so let's give it a go. So we'll put on our SAS. We are set to uh, maximum throttle. Obviously, one thing about uh, using rockets is, especially when you've got that amount of thrust, almost 3,000 thrust, that is going to give the whole ship a massive jolt. Um, on the initial uh, takeoff. So obviously if you've got any weak components in your design they're going to have a sudden shock and that's usually when uh, things start going horribly wrong on the launch pad. Uh, hence why I've got these uh, vertical struts going up here um, otherwise the bomb would pretty much destroy itself. Um, I have messed up my staging a little bit so I'll just quickly correct that before I take off. Right, so here we go. Let's see how high. Oh, the other thing to know, I am using uh, MechJeb purely for the information output here. So I can see vessel mass and also I, I can see what my apoapsis is going to be as well. Right, let's take off and see what happens. Shit! Right, okay, so, SAS on, throttle up to full, and here we go. And that's it, first stage is pretty much done. But it got us off the ground, I'm just going to throttle back to around three quarters, uh, save as much field as I can, just make this, uh, see if we can get as much, you know, get as high as we can. I think we just heard the explosions of the first stage smashing into the ground. Uh, wouldn't surprise me. Right, okay, so, you know, the, the fuel that we've got on stage two is running out quite rapidly, uh, even with being throttled back to only two thirds. You know, we're at half already. Now, um, when we get through the first part of the atmosphere, usually when I get about halfway into the second portion of the atmosphere, I'll turn to the 90 uh, figure on the um, the nav ball there. Right, so I mean our apoapsis is still only um, around 50. 
safety. So I'm just gently turning the craft over towards 90. And oh, we've run out of fuel. And Apoapsis, whoa, 112 kilometers really. 100, oh, 112 kilometers. That's not very high. So let's have a quick look at the map. See what that looks like. See, absolutely not a hope in hell in making a successful orbit, orbit even. Um, yeah. So that is a complete failure. And you're probably thinking, well, with the design of your first stage, not really surprised. Right. Now this is where everything will become apparent. So I'm going to re revert back to the vehicle assembly. Now. What I'm going to do here is I've got a um, pre-made uh, first stage which I'm going to use. So I'm going to take, this was uh, the, the first stage basically on that rocket uh, design. Um, so I'm going to take that off, ditch that, and I'm going to load up my jet engine launcher. So this is pretty much the same configuration. So I've got 13 engines and I'm using the uh, let's go find our engine. So I'm using the turbojet engine which produces 225 thrust. Um, I've got 13 of those. Now they come out at a total thrust of 2925. So that's 10 thrust units more than the rocket, so that's uh, negligible. Right, so here's our rocket, and uh, this time stage 1 is all set with a bunch of jet engines. Uh, so we're going to take off and see what happens. Right, so initially it looks like it's not going to take off, but everything's okay. One thing I think is actually quite an advantage to the way that that just took off is it's so gentle that it's not going to uh, put that massive shock through the entire craft like what happens with the rockets. Um, now what's evident immediately is already this has um, lasted a lot longer than the initial rocket stage. Um, and we... well we've only used about a third of our fuel. Now the thing about jet engines is the faster you go the more air gets put into them and the more efficient they become. So the initial um, like launch and takeoff um, you actually use more fuel in that short period of time. Now that I'm up to a bit of speed my, you'll see that the, uh, the liquid fuel usage is actually a lot slower. It's slowed right down so that means my fuel is going to last a long long time. So here we are, so if you have a look at the atmosphere gauge you'll see that um, you know, we're almost through the, uh, the first part of the atmosphere which is the thickest part, that's what gives you your most resistance, so that's why you need these massive rockets to get through them. But shortly after we get through this, the only problem with the jet engines is you know, they're going to flame out. So because I've got so many that will go out of control, so before that happens, or as it happens, I'm going to cut the thrust, so it's happening, I'm going to cut the thrust, and then launch stage 2 and increase thrust again, but, but we're already doing 400, 500 metres per second, so now I can actually throttle right back, I'm going to tip over to that 90 on the nav ball, it almost went a bit further than I wanted then. Right, so we're still increasing speed which is good. We've now entered the third part of the atmosphere so we've got even less resistance. So I'm going to bring the thrust right back to uh, one third. Keeping an eye on my uh, apple apsis, we're at uh, 70 at the moment. Fuel is looking okay, we've used a third of our fuel. Um, but now that we're pretty high, um, we don't need much fuel to be honest. We don't need that much thrust, so 
Again, as what I normally do when we get to around about 100, 105 on the Apple Apsis, I'm going to uh, follow my standard procedure, which is to uh, cut my thrust, which I have done, and I'm going to check the map. So here's our um, our flight path. It's already looking more um, a bit more than what we had on the uh, the rocket one, because obviously that went totally pear shaped, we ran out of fuel and we couldn't progress anymore. So what I'm going to do is when we get to about this point here, so I'm just going to mark, use a pointer thing to mark the, uh, the time. So when we get there, I'm going to um, then reapply a bit of thrust. Um, so I need to turn my craft so it's now horizontal relative to the horizon of the planet. Yeah, I'm not too fussed about that um, thing actually. I'm going to just get that out of the way because it's, uh, it's in the way really. Right, okay, so just before I get there, I'm going to go probably about there. I'm just going to forward time a little bit. Right, so now I'm going to apply thrust. I'm just going to start with one quarter. Uh, I'm catching it up still. What I want to do is make sure that I don't go past the apple apsis and that the apple apsis always stays in front of me. Because if you go past the apple apsis, then you end up using more fuel than you actually otherwise would have done trying to maintain your height. Because effectively, once you're past the apple apsis, you're starting to go down, so you're actually using more fuel to maintain your flight level. So here it's looking pretty good. I'm going to bring the uh, fuel back, and look at that. We've now got a nice orbit there. So 102,000 uh, meters on the periapsis. 252,000 meters on the apoapsis so that is an orbit it's not quite circular but that is uh, an orbit well above the atmosphere and uh, yeah we've still got 142 units of liquid fuel remaining so I mean we could still increase that orbit you know a little bit further in fact, let's see what we can get it to. Let's uh, just nip round to the uh, to the uh, apple apsis, and we'll just uh, plump that out. See how high we can get. Dun 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 always end up going past this a little bit sometimes. Oh, 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 oh. Go back, 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 back. <laughs> Alright, we're almost there. Come on. Back she goes, back she goes. It doesn't have to be exact, I mean we're only uh, we're only doing a test here, it's not like we're gonna zoom off to another uh, planet or anything. Uh, we haven't really got the fuel to do that with, to be honest. Right, okay, so we're just going to get around to the apple apsis. About 18 seconds away, so let's start burning on quarter. So if we bring that down to that, we can bring the apple apsis out to, you know, 3. 150 actually we could go even further than that so I mean I've still got 30 units of fuel I've brought that out to 422 I could probably go around the other go around to the apple apsis again and bring the periapsis out so I mean we we've achieved a, a very good orbit and that is you know the the second stage was pretty much identical between the two tests. The difference is that the first stage I used rockets, second stage I used the uh, the jet engines. I mean, 
So it would appear that the jet engines can actually get you into orbit with far less fuel. I mean, if I was to get that into orbit with rockets, I would have had to have had a lot more fuel for the uh, first stage. Probably um, more complicated, uh, you need asparagus staging. You'd probably be going up from 74 tonnes of weight to uh, pretty near a 200 just to uh, get out of that. So I think using the jet engines to you know, break through that first part of the atmosphere is probably the most efficient way. Um, I've yet to uh, obviously try it with much heavier payloads. I might give that a try. Um, but I would imagine it's simply a case of doubling your, your fuel. I mean, I only needed less than 300 liquid fuel and, uh, you know, doubling the number of jet engines that you use. Um, so, yeah, it looks like jet engines are a good solution to uh, getting your, your uh, spacecraft up into orbit. Well, what a surprise. Thanks for watching and I'll see you next time.